Hi, I'm Dr. Bob Summer from Columbia University. You probably found this video because you or someone you know had a stroke and was subsequently diagnosed with a hole in the heart called a patent foramen ovale. This has been a really controversial field for decades now, but over the last 18 months, there's all kinds of new information which I'd like to share with you today, including the newest recommendations on how to treat patients with stroke who are diagnosed with a PFO. First, we're gonna go and review some of the uh, background information that you need to really understand what the PFO is and how the strokes occur. Long before birth, the two top chambers of the heart, the right atrium and the left atrium, shown here as if we were looking at the patient from the front, start out as a common chamber. The wall that will ultimately separate one side from the other grows in two pieces. A thick piece grows down from the roof and a thinner, floppier piece grows up from the floor, overlapping but not connecting to one another, forming a flap in the heart wall that can open and close, allowing blood to cross from the right side of the heart to the left. This is a critical pathway because of the fact that the baby is not yet breathing. At birth, when the baby takes his or her first breath, the blood pressure on the left side increases, pushing the flap shut. Over the next few months, the two pieces of the wall grow together to create a solid boundary which the blood can no longer cross. But in 20 to 25% of all people, the two pieces do not fuse completely, leaving a persistent flap in the wall, which is called the patent foramen ovale, or PFO. When the flap opens, it allows continued blood flow from the right side of the heart to the left, just as it did before birth. This right to left flow becomes important because of the way the heart works after birth. Blood coming back from the body through the veins is low in oxygen and carries a variety of waste products picked up from the muscles and the organs of the body. The dirty blood is collected on the right side of the heart and is then pumped out to the lungs, which act as a filtration system that cleans the blood, removing waste products and adding oxygen back to the blood. The blood then returns from the lungs to the left side of the heart, cleaned and full of oxygen, where the left atrium collects the blood and the left ventricle then pumps the clean blood all over the body to bring the oxygen to the muscles and the organs, including the brain. Then, once depleted of its oxygen supply, the blood returns to the right side of the heart from the body, completing the cycle in which the dirty blood is on the right, the clean blood is on the left, and the wall's job is to separate the two sides to keep the blood from mixing. One of the waste products that returns to the right side of the heart are small blood clots. Everyone makes these in their veins. It's normal. When the heart wall is solid, the clots have no choice but to travel to the lungs with the rest of the dirty blood where they are filtered out. But every time the PFO opens and blood flows from the right to the left, dirty blood crosses to the clean side without getting filtered. If a blood clot is passing by the PFO when it opens, the clot can be pushed over to the left side of the heart. From there, the clot will be pumped out to the body with the clean blood. If it is pumped to the brain, a stroke may occur. Over the past 30 years, we have been studying the relationship between the PFO and strokes. Initially, we could repair the PFO surgically, but since 1992, a catheter procedure done through the vein in the leg has been available and has replaced surgery. The problem has been that until recently, we have not conclusively demonstrated that a strategy of closing the PFO was any more effective at preventing recurrent stroke than taking an aspirin every day. 
But since 2017, four randomized scientific trials have been published which compared the closure with blood thinners. In all four trials, the combination of PFO closure and blood thinners was shown to be significantly better than blood thinners alone. Stroke reduction in the group who received the PFO closure was reduced from 62% to more than 90% in the four trials. Based on these results, the FDA has approved two of the umbrella devices, the Amplatzer PFO occluder and the Gore Cardioform Septal occluder. These devices are very similar in concept. Each is comprised of two umbrellas or discs which are connected in the center. Both of the devices fold up inside of a small tube and then pop open when pushed out of the tube inside the heart. The procedure to implant the umbrella device is very safe and very simple. The entire procedure takes less than 30 minutes. Two needle holes are made in the femoral vein at the crease of the leg. There are no cuts and no stitches at the site. Local anesthesia is given to numb the leg, and sedation is given through the patient's IV to eliminate the patient's anxiety. There is no pain associated with this procedure because the leg will be numb and the heart doesn't have the right type of nerves to feel any of this. The patient will go home the same day with two small holes and a band-aid on the site. The femoral vein brings all of the dirty blood back from the leg and runs up to the heart in a straight path, entering the right atrium immediately adjacent to the PFO. A tube is advanced through the vein to the right atrium and then pushed across the PFO to the left side of the heart. Once across, the first side of the double umbrella device is opened and pulled back against the wall. The size of the device is chosen to be too large to fit back through the defect, and it effectively pulls the flap shut and covers it. The right-sided umbrella is then opened, creating a sandwich which clamps down on the PFO and keeps it from opening. Within several months of the implant procedure, the skin of the heart grows over the device, sealing it in place, making this a permanent repair. Patients need a few days off from work or from strenuous activity, but can be back in the gym within a week or two of the procedure. This has far more to do with healing the holes made in the vein of the leg than with the heart device itself. If you need additional information on this complicated subject, please contact either your cardiologist or your neurologist. Both have access to extensive information in the field. Please also feel free to contact us at Columbia University. Thank you.